Okay, so you guys, today's video, I don't want my husband to see it. So if you are a friend of mine, don't, don't tag my husband. Don't mention this to my husband. No need to bring it up in conversation the next time you're over having dinner. Um, let's just keep this between us, just YouTube and you and I, and those of you who are watching, because today I am going to reveal to you how much money I have spent on my dogs. And, um, I have a feeling that I'm probably going to be a little surprised and so I'm actually getting ready to go sit down right now and um, get my computer out, open up my Excel spreadsheet, get all of my paperwork out and put in all the numbers and see what the grand total is. Um, I'm recording this right now and I don't know. I, this isn't being, you know, this is pre-recorded. So I, I don't know what it is yet, but I fully suspect that it's probably a number that my husband um, would be uncomfortable with. L let's just put it that way. So, um, so let's, let's just keep this between us. Like nobody tell him, nobody comment, nobody tag him. Um, and you know, we'll probably be okay. All right. So how much has Maligator mom spent on dogs? Let's find out. <laughs> tally here and I feel like some of you might find this number a little obnoxious because I certainly did but um, the truth of it is that the grand total that I have spent on dogs is $45,107.27 and I am gonna go ahead and say up front that 30,000 of that comes from the fact that Fury is a $30,000 protection dog. And I wanted to include her in that prize and talk about that briefly because I feel like a lot of people don't understand how much um, like family protection or personal protection dogs that are already trained actually cost. Um, it's not hard to find out. A simple Google search, if you don't believe me, will, will show you um, that 30,000 is actually on the conservative side. And I've seen dogs sell for double that, even more. Um, so 30000 is a pretty conservative price for a personal protection dog. If that's something that you are considering, you can fully expect to pay tens of thousands of dollars for these dogs. Um, a lot of specialized training goes into getting a dog to perform at that level of personal protection, and so it does not come cheap. So, um, so 30000 of that bottom line there comes from Fury. Um, and then I went ahead and just broke this down into some simple categories for you guys. So the first category is going to be vet bills because as any pet owner knows, things happen, things come up. Um, you know, I've had to deal with things like a sliced paw before. Um, I have to go in and have Fury's nails uh, trimmed at the vet because they have to sedate her to do it. Um, you know, you know, so, so things like that come up and they seem like little increments, but over time that kind of stuff really adds up. So I actually had, um, a bit of a scare with Riot a few months ago where he had a small bump up here on his side and it wasn't very big at first. It was just the size of a quarter. And I thought, well, maybe he got bit by a bug or maybe, you know, Fury scratched him or bit him and it, and it 
kind of lumped up, you know, a little knot in his muscle or something maybe. And so um, I wasn't too worried about it at first, but after a few days went by and it didn't go down at all, I made an appointment with the vet. And so we took him in and she's like, well, this doesn't really look good. Let me do an aspiration and take a look at the cells under the microscope while I've got you here and we'll get a better picture of, of what might be going on. So she did that and she came back out and told me that it looked to her to be about, she was about 99% sure that this was cancerous and that not only was it cancerous, but it was pretty fast growing aggressive type of cancer. And so um, I was just devastated at that news. imagine what that could have potentially meant for us um, so what we did was we scheduled surgery literally for the next day 7 a.m. Um, to have that tumor removed and so we went in he had the surgery they sent that tumor off to a pathology lab or, or whatever you would call it and um, we were so lucky to get the results back that in fact it was not cancer um, it was it was benign it was not cancer and so we were really really lucky he didn't have to have any follow-up tre like treatment like chemotherapy or anything like like they were thinking originally and so we really um, we really got lucky in that situation um, but you know even the surgery and all of that it wasn't cheap as you can imagine so I've spent total in vet bills a little over three thousand dollars in the last 12 months um, so it's everything from the unexpected, like what we dealt with, with Riot and his, and his little mass that he had growing, all the way down to nail trims, well visits, um, flea and tick treatment, which is $360 a year. So, you know, these are just little increments, but over the course of 12 months, they certainly add up quickly. Uh, the next category I broke things down into is just equipment. So what you can expect to spend uh, on things like bowls, leashes, collars, harnesses, all that kind of thing. And um, I, I, I'm pretty good, I know about what things cost. So I kind of had to sit down and in my head just kind of tally up um, what I could remember I had spent on, on specific things. And I was actually surprised when I wrote it all down because I came up with about $1,200 in this equipment, in, in things that I've spent money on. So. Um, so, you know, that stuff, again, it's something that, that is maybe not a huge purchase right off the bat, but over the course of 12 months, it certainly adds up quick. Um, I also included the price of my garage kennel because that was kind of a big ticket item. It was, uh, $500. It's a great big 10 by, I think 10 by six foot, if that's the right dimensions. I think it's, it's about 10 by six feet. It's a great big garage kennel that I have for them so that um, if I'm gonna be gone for longer stretches of time uh, and I don't wanna put them in their inclusion crates for that long, then I can, put, um, I can put them in the kennel and that gives them a little bit of space to stretch their legs and lay on their bed and walk around and that kind of thing. So that was $500, but that's cool because that's only a one-time purchase. Um, and then I broke it down into food. How much do I spend on food annually? And Riot and Fury do not eat cheap food. I buy them a expensive kibble because they need good quality food for the type of work and training that they do. Um, and so I figured out that that's, I'm, I'm spending $1,088 a year on their food. And um, I think that's on the low side because that's just for their kibble. I didn't include the price of um, lots of times I will buy raw patties because they like that as a topper over their kibble and I feel like it gives them a little something extra. So that doesn't include that price. That's just for the dry food, just for the kibble alone. Um, but the biggest uh, category that came in here is training. And so 
one thing I think that a lot of people don't realize when you get a Malinois is that it's very, very important to invest in professional training, especially if this is your first Malinois. And a professional trainer is not cheap. They're gonna run you anywhere from 80 to 90, $100 an hour. And um, if you're spending that much on a trainer, you should be able to have them well versed in all manners of training and whatever you want to do. So if you have, you know, maybe you want just basic obedience, maybe you want to train in personal protection, maybe you want to train in French ring, all of those things, whatever sports you want to get involved in. If you're spending, you know, 90 to hundred dollars an hour on a trainer, that trainer should be well versed in all of those things and be able to help you reach all of those goals for your dog. So again, very important to invest in a trainer. Um, I broke down just an average for one dog that I felt like you could expect to pay. Um, so I took $90 an hour cause I feel like that's a good average. And I just went ahead and calculated once a week, once a week training, which really isn't that much. So $90 an hour for once a week for one year comes out to $4,320 a year. And that's just on one dog one dog once a week. So um, I guess, you know, what the takeaway from this video is, is that Malinois are not cheap. They're definitely a very expensive breed to keep up on and keep up with. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time, you're going to spend a lot of money on this breed of dog. So you need to make sure that before you purchase a Malinois, you know upfront what you can expect to pay. And I feel like after everything that I went through, everything that I wrote down, all of the vet bills I poured over, every little thing I could, could remember to put down on this piece of paper, I feel like five to $6,000 a year is a good solid number that you can expect to spend just on maintenance with your dog, considering training, food, equipment, all of that. Five, five to 6,000 a year. And I think that's pretty conservative. So, um, so yeah, make sure that before you bring a Malinois into your life, your finances are in order, you've got some money set aside, and um, be able to give them the good quality training, good quality food, good quality, quality equipment that they deserve, and you will have a very happy dog. Maybe a lighter pocketbook, but a happy dog.